out for a dive at Porto with a couple of dive buddies. Uh, I left them warming up in the main diving area while I headed out to the rocks at quarter mile past Porto. When you arrive at the rocks, the first thing uh, you see are these algae covered rocks, uh, also littered with leather stars. Leather stars are predators and one of the things they eat are uh, sea urchins. Not clear to me how effective they are against uh, large green sea urchins, but apparently they are on the diet. As you go farther north, you find this, rocks with no algae, uh, no leather stars, and tons of green sea urchins, and also my time-lapse camera. The scene looks pretty static here, but I recorded for a couple hours, and here is that couple hours compressed into about 20 seconds. And you can see there's lots of activity, urchins wandering around, and uh, also these sea cucumbers. You can see them just hoovering up uh, any bits of sediment and so forth on the rocks. With the time-lapse camera set up, I headed back uh, to join my friends at the main dive area. And here you can see the bottom near the bow of the uh, Grand Hall. And you can see that's got a lot of algae growing on it, both uh, broadleaf sugar kelp and then what looks to me to be some sort of smaller, maybe um, red algae. Depth here is maybe uh, 10 or 12 meters. And here I am descending near the stern of the Grant Hall. Uh, the bottom here is about 6 meters deep, uh, 6 meters deeper and uh, the organisms on the bottom are quite a bit different. You can see that the bottom isn't covered with algae here. There's only just a few uh, leaves of kelp. But what there are are these crinoids, which are a, a filter feeding animal. And they uh, just form a little forest that starts at about this depth and grows thicker as you go deeper. So maybe there's some competition between the crinoids and the kelp. I'm not really sure. Back up onto the upper decks of the Grand Hall, where it's quite a bit shallower. There's a lingcod sitting on some eggs that I'd uh, seen the week before, and I wanted to revisit it. There he is with his head stuck in the wreck. I wasn't really sure where his eggs were. Uh, I know that he's guarding something because he's very aggressive. This is, of course, time for them to guard their eggs, but I hadn't actually seen the eggs. But sticking my camera in there, there they are. There's the eggs. He's not super happy about me being there. You can see the scars under his chin there, getting into fights, defending those eggs. And here he is again, sitting in a little garden of sea anemones. He's, he's covering right over the top of the eggs. To me it almost looks like his uh, posterior dorsal fin has healed up a bit since last time I saw it. Since he was just going to sit there, I thought it might be interesting to get a uh, shot from his perspective. Got to check the time. Don't want to stay down too long. I left him, didn't want to disturb him too much. 
and headed out to have a look at the uh, budding sea anemone. I try and check in on it whenever I can to see how it's doing. I first discovered it about uh, five months ago in October 2023 and I've been trying to follow its progress or the progress of its bud which you can see here on the right and it really hasn't made any progress from what I can tell. It looks pretty much the same as it did when I first saw it. I'm not sure how long this process takes for that bud to become a completely independent individual. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens once the spring phytoplankton bloom happens and there's lots of food in the water. Maybe the process will speed up a bit then. In the distance you can see the Centennial 3 just looming out of the murk. Now we've been diving down 12 uh, to 18 meters a bit, so we went for a bit of swim, or went for a bit of a swim out to a quarter mile past Porto again. And here's uh, one of my friends making a dive. Not as easy to follow as it is to be followed. One isn't diving on one's own time, so one isn't maybe getting quite as good a breath before descending. I frequently see a school of uh, yellowtail rockfish out here down about 18 to 20 meters, which is uh, pretty close to the depth we're at here. But I hadn't seen them in quite a while. And um, my friend here actually spotted them in one of his dives and gave me some info on where they were. And you can see the, there were some aggressive sea lions out there. This guy made a pretty close pass at speed there. Another one. Quite graceful the way they join up there into a little pack of three. Anyway, it's interesting to watch them, but um, I really wanted to see the yellowtail rockfish. So I uh, followed the instructions from my friend as to where he had seen them. Started heading down to 18 meters. I didn't get all the way down there. I got intercepted. Another sea lion showed up. Oh, man, he was close. That, that, uh, I'm in a very wide angle lens, uh, so he was only a few centimeters away from the lens at his closest approach. And I took that as kind of a, we don't want you here. It seemed pretty aggressive and I didn't bother trying to get back down there. It was my two buddies headed in. They'd found an old weight belt that they wanted to yard back to shore. And uh, while they were doing that, I made a few more dives uh, out there a quarter mile past Porto. I was looking to see if there were any lings spawning out there. I'd, I'd seen some the week before, to see how they were doing. In fact, I found one, but this guy had got, uh, sustained an injury to his eye. And you can see the striped perch and you can see a small school of shiner perch. Uh, a lot of winters, the shiners hang around the ferry dock, but since the sea lines have started uh, showing up there, um, the shiners seem to have disappeared from there. And as far as I know, this is the only place where you find them at Porto right now is uh, sort of at the opposite end of the park from where the sea lions haul out. Anyways, anyways uh, time to head in. Um, covered my time-lapse camera. You can see the urchins have crawled all over the base of it. And that was it.